Welcome to Text and Translation, Masha. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. It's it's so nice to meet you. This is our first time that we visited, and I asked you in to tell us a little bit about the uh, Ukrainian experience moving to Texas. So thank you for joining us and for wearing your very Texan. Uh, tank top there. I did my best. <laughs> <laughs> and I did my best to look Ukrainian. What do you think? <laughs> it looks perfect. But I see, Ukrainian. I see you have the Ukrainian yes, flag in your is, necklace. This is my Ukrainian flag. I don't have my Vishivanka with me here, unfortunately, but I do have this. You were traveling light when you came, weren't you? Yes. Uh, I had a backpack with my documents and my son had a backpack with a laptop, that's all. Wow. Yeah. I went to Ukraine last year with only a backpack, with only my, my carry-on, and it was hard to live for a month there, much less moving long-term. Well, I didn't plan to move. When we left Kiev, that's where I'm from, we thought that we were leaving for just a couple of days, maximum a couple of weeks. It took us three days uh, to get from Kiev to Uzhgorod which is usually a nine-hour trip, but there were so many people who tried to leave Kiev. And during these three days, it became very clear that we need to leave Ukraine because it was not safe there. And again, not thinking that this will last for more than a couple of months, we came to Texas, but it was, um, you know, we, we didn't think that we would stay here for longer yeah. than a couple of months. Our friends invited us to just stay with them until it is safe to go back. So now it looks like... Uh, how, how many days has it been now? Uh, 110. 110. 110. So, so we're filming this in mid-June uh, 2022. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, very unexpectedly, we had to just leave our life behind and change our lives for, yeah. you know, for some time. And you ended up in Austin, Texas. <laughs> ended up in Surprise. Austin. You know what? This is, I'll be honest, Texas is the last place I, <laughs> I thought I would end up in the States out of all the states. Where had you been before? Florida, Washington State, and Northern California. Yes, those were more logical choices for me. But most of my friends that lived in California are in Texas now, so... <laughs> We've noticed a lot of those Californians. Yes. <laughs> yes, so that's what happened to most of my friends in, from California. They're here. And why did they come from California? Uh, for work. So they yeah. just more jobs. More jobs, yes. More lower housing costs, maybe. Lower taxes, yeah. and um, I have not been back to California since twelve years ago. So I don't know how different it is, but they say it is very different now. Yeah. So I cannot make my own judgment. It's only from their words. <laughs> So would you say there are a lot of Russian speakers around the Austin area now? I've met some uh, uh, Ukrainians uh, that have been living here for a while. Uh, I met a couple of Russian speakers that originally came from Russia, but like 30 years ago, yeah. you know, so I don't even count them as Russians. I mean, they're, they're fully Texan now. <laughs> they're fully Texan or American yeah. or whoever, because their mentality is very different. Yeah from Eastern European or from European whatsoever. I mean, when I talk to those people, I'm like, well, is it really possible to change your thinking that much? Mm. But I guess 30 years is a long time. Yeah. Well, I, you bring up an interesting topic. I've only been to Ukraine once after I studied Russian for a few years and I, I learned a few words of Ukrainian there, but I can't speak Ukrainian. And can you explain for our viewing audience, this is the Texan Translation Show, I call it. Can you explain the, the use of the two languages in Ukraine? Yes. Summarize. I know it's yes. complex. I, I would love to because this topic is very hot right now. Yes. Ukrainian and Russian are two different languages. Yes, they do belong to the same group. It is, these are Slavic languages, but 
There are many other languages in the same group. Belarusian language, Slovak language, Polish language, Serbian language. So there is a huge group of languages. Right. And yes, Ukrainian and Russian have similarities. They use the same alphabet. It's Cyrillic alphabet. They uh, have similar letters, but alphabets are a little bit different. The Ukrainian language has some additional letters and doesn't have some letters that Russian The one that looks like the I, the lowercase I, yes, for example? Yes, yes, e, that's E. What is E in Russian is in Ukrainian, so there are there are there are similarities. Yes, that's true, but there are differences differences as well. Vocabulary is different, grammar is different, mm. the feel of the language is different. Mm. I mean, and I know it, it's it comes from a Ukrainian, mm. but it is different. And but you speak both. I speak both. Uh, I will tell you even more. Uh, my first language is Russian. I grew up in Kiev, and uh, in Kiev, most people of my age spoke Russian from their childhood. My, peer, my father uh, was a doctor, my mother was a teacher. Ukrainian language, the Ukrainian language at that time was so much oppressed that it was shameful mm. to speak Ukrainian, yeah. especially if you were at school. Or in the Soviet Union? In the Soviet Union, yes. I was born in the Soviet Union. I'm the, <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> so I remember uh, after Ukraine uh, became independent in 1991, I just uh, finished elementary school and my mom told me that for middle school I will go to a Ukrainian speaking class and it was a disaster for me, I huh. tried, I was just like no, why? This is a language that only the villagers speak. That's that's the propaganda that yeah. was the attitude. The attitude, and you were laughed at. You were bullied if you spoke Ukrainian wow. at school. And uh, the history of oppressing uh, the Ukrainian language by uh, Tsar Russia and then by the Soviet Union several is like uh, it has been going on for several hundred years and that is why during soviet union there was such a thing as a pro pro approximation i'm sorry approximation of the ukrainian language to the russian language which meant that uh ukrainian language was brought as close like gr grammar wise and vocabulary huh. wise to russian and that is why there is this misunderstanding yeah. that russian and ukrainian are the same close enough <laughs> they're not they're not the same and uh moreover when i was there i would watch tv during the day and the broadcasts were all in ukrainian and i expected to understand some of it but just a couple of words here and there yeah. makes yeah. sense to me well, Russians, uh, most Russians do not understand Ukrainian, and most Ukrainians do understand Russian. Right now, uh, more people are trying to speak Ukrainian in Ukraine, and I see people who try writing in Ukrainian, and sometimes it doesn't sound good, and doesn't look good, but I'm so proud. I'll be honest, I'm so proud of my country and my people for trying and for changing this way of thinking. Uh, stereotype. Oh, yeah, stereotype. I mean, in 2018, that's when this shift started. Mm. When people realized that we don't want to be, you know, associated with Russia anymore, and yeah. we are choosing European path, you know, and we, want to, we want to be closer to Poland and to Western European uh, countries. And I know a lot of people who spoke Russian their entire life, and then overnight they're like, "Yeah, Ukrainian now." And by now, their Ukrainian is perfect because they yeah. have been practicing for so long. <laughs> yeah. So I believe that those people that just started speaking Ukrainian, uh, they will get there. That's Everything right. is going to be. Yeah. Good. And you work as a translator or an yes. interpreter? I work as a translator and interpreter, and my main working language is Ukrainian. I would probably have a harder time translating, not translating, interpreting into Russian. Okay. 
with translation it's easier i mean you you have time to think right yeah yeah so so tell me between translation and interpretation are you more comfortable with one or the other do you do more translation most of my clients request ukrainian and uh, i get enough work into ukrainian but yeah. every now now then i would yeah i would translate into russian especially something like game development oh, or yeah. IT. I've played the video games um, about Chernobyl. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and I went and visited there in person yeah, when I was yeah. in the country. And that's... Oh, see, I have I've never done that. I mean, I wanted so much. So, yeah, it's just a one-day trip yeah. and come back. It's very interesting. You can go to those villages and yeah. they preserve the... Mm -hmm. just like it was. Anyways, I do translation and interpretation too, and I used to do mostly interpreting in the courts for Spanish mm -hmm. speakers, and now I do more translation here at the office. But I, I find them very different mentally, just the, the atmosphere, the environment with interpretation, it's so intense, it's yeah. like being on stage, it's like, I don't know, being an actor or a performer, it's like singing at a concert, it interpreting it, and afterwards you're exhausted yeah. and your brain yeah. is just turn yeah. to mush but with translation you get to think about things and research it and choose just the right word sort of a different personality type for me with interpreting uh it's like you have worked for eight hours and you're done but with translation it's 24 7. yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> nights I mean, and weekends yes exactly <laughs> exactly and so i mean there are pros yeah. and cons yeah and it's, it's nice to be able to go back and forth. Like if you're busy with translation, then you do less interpretation and vice versa. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens. Gives you more flexibility. Yeah, it is true, it is true. Well, I've got a list of uh, questions that I like to ask my guests here, but I'm enjoying your stories, so it's okay if we get off track. Can you uh, tell me uh, about your hometown um, and sort of compare it to what's life like in Austin, Texas? I cannot compare it because I have not been around much. I mean, I still have problem with transportation. It's, yeah, it's a very hot topic for me, you yeah. know. Are you uh, using Uber? Uber, um, yes, very expensive <laughs> and not always there when right. we need it. In Ukraine, I use Uber all the time and it was, yeah, it was easier. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah <laughs> it was easier to use Uber in Kyiv. Sure. So I come from Kyiv the capital of Ukraine, beautiful city, very busy city, European city, lots of events, lots of things going on. You can find events or something to do yeah. in like whatever kind of music you like, whatever activities you like. Kyiv is becoming very liberal and uh, you can see different, different people. And I love it about Kyiv, to be honest. If you want to visit Kyiv, if you want to visit Kyiv, <laughs> <laughs> I think that the best time is April or May. Huh. That's when everything is blooming. Yeah. And uh, the last weekend of May is the day of Kyiv, the, of the city. And uh, a lot of like different events, fest festivals and things like that. Kyiv is known for its electronic music stage. And it is even called Second Berlin or Berlin of the Eastern Europe. Oh, yeah. So, yes, techno, deep house music, you name it, it's all there. We got so many different DJs and a lot of top names coming to Kyiv to play. Uh, and uh, yeah. It's cool. it's a it's a beautiful place. Yes, yeah. I I love my city. I I'll be honest. And uh, and you miss it. I miss it. And uh, well, I miss the city. I miss people. Yeah. There. I mean, my life was there. <laughs> well, what's something that you've enjoyed about Austin since you came? What's something nice you can say about it? <laughs> people? Yeah. Seriously, I never expected so much support. And uh, I feel so welcome here. And making friends is easy. And even I don't get out much, but I do meet people even yeah. online, you know, Americans, Ukrainians, Russians. I met a Colombian girl yesterday uh, at uh, Blues on the Green. Oh, yeah. 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 
So, I mean, people are amazing. That's good. Amazing. Well, can you tell us when you first got here some hard things to adjust to with the transportation? That's um, still... What else? The heat? No, I love the heat. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's, <laughs> it's my weather. I, I love oh, cool. it. Yes. Yes, transportation, that's that's my biggest problem now. Oh. And uh, coming oh. from a large city with a beautiful sure. uh, public transportation. Easy to get anywhere. Easy to get anywhere. You know, it, it was never a problem. And here somebody says, oh, it's just around the corner. I'm like, oh, so can you walk there? Oh, probably no, but I will take you hop there. It, hop in your pickup truck and drive there. Yeah, so 15 minutes later, <laughs> at the speed limit, I arrived to the around the corner. Right, I'm right. like, what corner did you mean? <laughs> that was many, many corners. <laughs> yes, so... Are people easy to understand, or is there an accent? I, I have uh, no problem. People okay. probably have problem understanding me sometimes, but... <laughs> You've lived in the U.S. for quite a while yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what about when you first got to the U.S.? Was it hard to communicate? Um, Do you remember? 20 years ago. <laughs> no, it was not. Your English I, was already good. I spoke some English, I think maybe uh, some like local, you know, dialect dialects, what do you call it? Uh, Expression. uh, Expressions. Accents. Accents. Yeah. Uh, No, dialects, sorry. Uh, Like, very difficult to understand. I remember uh, first month, uh, I was just like in my room, just thinking, I just want to be quiet. (laughs) No English. I just want to be quiet. My thoughts in Russian or Ukrainian. Yes. But then, after three months, I felt very comfortable. Oh, good. I have some some old fashioned Texas expressions that are funny for me. And I want and I want to see if you've ever heard this and if you if you haven't, just guess what it means. Okay. Um, what would it mean if somebody said this ain't my first rodeo? Uh, I have experience with yeah. this. Have you heard that before? Yes. Okay. Here's a, a more obscure, more Texan <laughs> one. We've howdied, but we ain't shook. So we just met and we don't really know. Yeah. Oh, you're good. <laughs> I'm a linguist, you must remember? Be a linguist. <laughs> We've had it, but we ain't shook. I've never actually heard anybody say that, but I've got a, a list that I'm referring to. Have you found any good places to get Ukrainian style food here? No, not yet. Well, if you like borscht, I invite you to my house. Oh, I Where do. So I'm a vegetarian. Can you make vegetarian? Sure. Okay. No problem. Great. <laughs> and um, how about grocery stores? With I've heard about one. Um, I don't remember. The Borderless name. European yes, market. Yes, I actually got um, like some job opening, oh, yeah. you know, announcement from it yesterday. So, but I haven't been there. And my Russian-speaking friend yesterday was telling me that that would be the place to get food. Yes, I buy my buckwheat there. Yes. <laughs> so, <Yes. laughs> yeah. Otherwise it's hard to find. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I don't think I miss buckwheat yet, but mm. I will yeah, I will remember that. <laughs> okay. Back home, do people have any stereotypes about Texas? Do you think of it yeah. as cowboys and I was gonna ask you, where's your cowboy hat? I have a cowboy hat <laughs> okay. actually. I don't wear it every day. You, you need to wear it the more. I wasn't sure it went with my shirt. <laughs> this is disappointing, you know. No cowboy ca- cowboy hat, no ca- cowboy boots, uh, no I feel like we've really let you down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, but really, uh, I'm very surprised at how liberal uh, Austin is. I didn't expect that. I mean... Wait till you get outside of Austin. It's not the same. (laughs) Well, um, what I see now, you know, going to different events and how open people are and how accepting people are, I'm very happy to see that. Yes. Cool. Have you traveled to any other cities like Houston or San Antonio? Not yet. Not yet. Well, you should see yeah. some more of the state. My right son here. has traveled around more than I. Oh. <laughs> well, he's in school and they mm-hmm. have uh, different trips. trips. And, yeah, yeah, now he's in somewhere near San Antonio now for kids camp. Oh, so, cool. I mean, he, he has life. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Good for him. Um, let's see. 
maybe you can teach us a few words in Ukrainian. How do you greet somebody? How do you say hi, hello? Vitaiu. 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 Yes, okay. hello. Um, can you use that to any to a friend, to a stranger? Uh, Vitaiu is more uh, to a stranger or to someone you, you respect. Okay. Uh, and to a friend, you would say Privit. 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 Okay. You know that probably. Sort of like hello versus hi. Yes. In English. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Vitaiu. So if I if I'm meeting somebody who just got here from Ukraine who I haven't met, I would say Vitaiu. Vitaiu. How would I say welcome? Um, or welcome to Texas. Yes. Gosh, I just want to blink. <laughs> <laughs> it's the camera, it makes us nervous. <laughs> I know. Vitaju v Tehasi, можно сказать. Vitaju v Tehasi. V Tehasi. In Texas. V Tehasi. Vitaju v Tehasi. Okay. All right. Vitaju v Tehasi. I saw a lady in my neighborhood today who's from Ukraine, and she was out. It was the babushka pushing the, the baby in the stroller, and I told her, Dobra haranku. I think that means good morning. Good morning, right? yes. And it's Dobra ha. Dobra poranku. Even though it's what I, in Russian, want to say Dobra va. Well, is, is that one of it's, the, the It's one of the differences, yeah. Okay, Dobra ha. Dobra poranku. And she smiled and waved back, so I felt like it meant yeah, something. Yeah, it meant something, <laughs> it yes. Good very good. Very good, yes. It did. Yes. Well, do you have any suggestions for Texans who um, are concerned about the situation in Ukraine and want to help or want to want to welcome Ukrainians here? What well, can we do? What I want to say is any support is very welcome. You know, even seeing a Ukrainian flag on your like bumper or like as a sticker or even like on uh, an avatar yeah. on Facebook, it helps. It helps me feel better and know that you know the entire world is with us. Um, for me, uh, it is very important to know that uh, I'm welcome here. You know, uh, I'm looking for friends always, so be as friendly as you can. And uh, sometimes uh, I think people that will come here, they will be in a bit of a shock. And so maybe they will not be as, will not seem as open. Just make first step, you know, just yeah. try to approach people. Ukrainians are very friendly uh, in most cases. So, and um, yeah, just, just be there. Just be there and try to make friends and uh, show around and explain because um, it's very new for us. Many things, even uh, uh, getting Medicaid for my son, it was not easy. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to fill out the papers. The system's very different, system's even different. though you work in the medical field yes, as a translator. Yes, right? it is. It is yeah. very different. And uh, things like um, going grocery shopping if somebody doesn't have a car, oh, or right. explaining different things like going to Costco and saying, this is... This is cheese, and this is, I mean, I can read it and I can, you know, I can tell things, you know. But it's not your kind of cheese. Yeah, and sometimes it's like, what the heck is this, you know, yeah. and you, you just don't know. People just don't know. Do not assume that people know. Right. Because they don't. I remember my first grocery shopping trip in Odessa. It was just confusing because half the things there, I wasn't sure what it was, and the things I was looking for, I couldn't find it. Yeah. It just yeah. took a long time to figure out what I can eat and then how to prepare it with what I have. Yeah. Another thing is many people that will arrive here will come here without their families. They will come here like uh, to stay with their friends. Right. Just make them feel that they're part of your families. That's important. Okay. And once the war is over and tourism is is available again. What should we see? What would you recommend a visitor to Ukraine uh, well, enjoy? Other than the concerts you told us about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kiev uh, has a beautiful and uh, very ancient history. There are a lot of buildings and street streets that are 1500 year old, uh, years old. And uh, Lviv is a beautiful place to visit. Odessa yeah. is an amazing place to visit. and. Uh, the, uh, the sea and beach is there. Um, 
Well, Kharkiv is not there anymore, but we hope that it will be rebuilt and um, will, yeah, will be as beautiful as it uh, used to be. Uh, Western Ukraine is beautiful. There are a lot of uh, smaller towns with beautiful history, with uh, many famous people who lived there before. Ukraine is beautiful. Come to Ukraine and you know meet people there. They will show everything and tell you everything because we love our country. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us today. And I I can vouch for you. I've been to Ukraine and it was a wonderful experience. And I wish you the best your time in the U.S. and hope that you'll be able to go home soon and it'll be safe and better than it was before. Thank you so much. Thank you.